because people think that this is all woo-woo and unicorns and sparkly crowns and uh, magical portals with sparkly uh, transports and bifrost and, and, and all these things with the stars and the moon and the crystals and the lake and the lady of the lake and all these things. And it is not even like that at all. I was going to kill myself. I even put my cat food recipe in my suicide note, but I changed my mind, took suicide off the table, turned my life around, made new friends, started learning three languages, bonjour, made a suicide documentary, spilling my guts to the world, started this YouTube channel to help you say goodbye to suicide while drinking out my Chuck E. Cheese cup. For example, when you get a cut, your body heals itself, right? When you get a bruise, your body heals itself. When certain things happen to your body, your body heals itself. Um, I had a spinal fusion a long time ago. And even though they had to put the screws and the bracket, the body healed itself, you know, around it in order for it to function and close up and, you know, all these little vessels and this, whatever that had to, you know, be attached or whatever. Um, because your body's really good at healing itself when you, when you get out the way um, and when you have proper intervention. Proper intervention would be when they put the screw, the, the bracket in my screws because I was missing cartilage in one of my... Um, in one of my um, vertebrae, and intervention would be that they put the screws there so that way it could help me heal faster versus me, um, you know, laying in a bed trying to, you know, tell my body, make more cartilage, make more cartilage, make more cartilage, and trying to, like, convince my body that it could heal itself. Is that real? You can look up Joe Dispenza. I 1,000% believe that that is real. Absolutely. And I, I absolutely hands down believe that that's how Jesus was healing people, that he was just manifesting like, you're healed, you're healed. Blah, blah, blah. And if you start getting into all this stuff, you're probably going to start realizing that that's probably exactly how Jesus was healing people, uh, that he was using manifestation because he was teaching us that we can do the exact same thing that he can do because he said so. And if he said it, unless he's a liar, then we should be able to do the same thing that he did too. And when you watch um, like the movie, The Secret, where the guy was in that, that truck accident and he told the doctors, the doctors was like, oh, you need the surgery. You're not going to walk again. You're probably paralyzed, blah, blah, blah. And the guy was like, mm, I'm going to walk out of here by Christmas. And I want to say it was eight months. I could be wrong. You can double check. You can correct me on that if I am. Um, but that he said, I'm going to walk out of here in eight months. And that he literally laid in the bed and he was thinking about his body healing itself. Because he knew, like with the cuts, with the bruises, the body can heal itself. So why can't these cells heal other parts that people feel like are so drastic and, and have to only use medicine and science to physically put things back together like the Humpty Dumpty? And he ended up walking out the hospital by Christmas. Um, so th again, that's Joe Dispenza. If I remember, I'll put the name somewhere. But I absolutely love his books. I'm in the middle of Oh, which one? You are the placebo. Because I started that one, but then I started the other ones, the, the attached and um and think and grow rich. So I love those audiobooks, but it's hard because then you listen to one and then uh, you're trying to finish them all stuff. But I definitely say if you were gonna listen to anything at all, if you are sitting and stewing in sadness, depression, and you are moping and you hate your life and people don't love you and everybody's sad and everybody sucks, I get it. I hear you. Joe Dispenza, you are the placebo, hands down. And if you don't want to buy the book, then I would definitely say you can, um, I'm going to see if I can remember to upload the links to some of his videos that I watched, because um, he does have some lectures and some videos where he explains this in a really interesting way, but it can get a little scientific and extra. So um, at this point, I just feel like using affirmations just to get yourself to a place where you are more comfortable, that would be a lot, um, that that would be better for you at this time. And then as you start feeling better, as you start doing your daily activities, um, your daily, what do you call it? Oh, your ADLs. Once you start doing your activities of daily living, then you're going to start feeling that you are a little bit better to learn more, to get more, to gain more. And it's going to be easier for you to start really just diving into this whole brand new life that you're creating. So like for right now, I just want you to understand how all this stuff works together because people think that this is all woo-woo and unicorns and sparkly crowns and uh, magical portals with sparkly uh, transports and bifrost and, and, and all these things with the stars and the moon and the crystals and the lake and the lady of the lake and all these things. And it is not even like that at all. It is for some people, 
there are people out there who are going to do all that and ask you to pay money to buy crystals and do all these things and blah, 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 stuff like that. But a just so you know how it's up, crystals and healing crystals, they are only worth whatever you believe in them. Meaning you have your wedding ring that's just a piece of metal. And when your mate cheats on you, that wedding ring doesn't mean crap. But when that person is faithful to you and you guys are riding and dying together, that piece of metal has a big, strong meaning to it. That's the same way that it is with these crystals. It's just an inanimate, inanimate objects. You don't need them. You don't need a wedding ring to be married and be faithful. But they are inanimate objects that people use and they put importance on them. And... That's where all of those feelings and emotions that get attached to that object, that's where that comes from. That's why when people wear their wedding rings and they're so happy that their spouse wears them all the time and they don't take it off or, you know, when they're going out to a club or going golfing or going doing this and the other, and they feel like it's important to them and they feel like it's important to the other person. Um, but just because they wear it, it doesn't mean that, you know, they're not going to go off and do this and that, whatever. So it, it has to do, it's the meaning behind that actual object. Um, same thing like with the, with the crystal things uh, or the rocks and stones, my brother, um, he gave me a, a rose quartz. He gave me a rose quartz egg. And he said, Eileen, this was back when I was young and single, um, 22. And he said, Eileen, I want you to get married. So I'm giving you this rose quartz because rose quartz means love. And I want you to find love in your life. And I want you to be happy. And I know that like you're really domestic and that's what you really want to be a housewife, blah, blah, blah. So I took it and I tell you no lie, I was like, I do, I really do, I really want to. And I didn't give it like so much thought other than the amount of love that came from my brother who genuinely wanted me to find love and find a husband and be happy, like all that love. That's what that rose quartz represented. It was, the, it was all that love that I got from him. And then of course, shortly after I ended up meeting my husband, just saying. So, um, so I do believe that the importance we put on the objects is what actually brings these outcomes, but you don't need to spend money on all these things just cause, you know, you have crosses in your house, you know, it's the same thing when you have crosses and you have this, you have that, you have blah, blah, blah. It's whatever emotions and feelings that you put into these objects. That's going to determine like what you do that day, how you act that day, how you feel, um, the behaviors that you're going to project into your 3D living that day. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear about that. This is just quantum physics. This is just the realities that you are choosing to live. This is just the daily living you're choosing. Manifestation just says um, that that's what happens. Manifestation is, well, you created the life. You thought it was negative, so your life ended up negative. You thought it was positive, so it ended up positive. Same thing like with, um, for example, if you want to be a, a billionaire, you probably don't really want to be a billionaire. How do I know that you don't want to be a billionaire? Are you doing the work to be a billionaire? No. Is any of the things that your actions in your life, things that are moving you another step forward to be a billionaire? No. So you don't really want to be a billionaire. You think that it's maybe too hard to be a billionaire, so you don't do those things. So now you're manifesting a life where it's too hard to be a billionaire, so you're not a billionaire. And that's manifestation. Conscious manifestation, which you'll hear about a lot, is when you are aware that all of this exists and comes together. And then you say, okay, I'm going to make the decision that I'm going to only input positive thoughts in my mind. All these positive thoughts that I put in my mind are going to inspire me to make decisions in my life that are going to bring me from here to race. I don't even know which one that was, but that's not important. Conscious manifestation is when you decide that you are going to intentionally and persistently and aggressively input positive thoughts into your brain so you can brainwash yourself with positivity and remove the negative thoughts that are controlling your life. And then that's going to get you from here to a happy reality, your happy, um, 
your happy reality. It's going to shift you from whatever other negative realities you're living. And it's going to shift you into this happy, positive reality where whatever the happiness looks like to you, if you want kids, if you don't, if you want this, if you want that, whatever your dreams are, your, your dream life, your wish fulfilled, that's what they call it, uh, living in the end, all these things. It's going to inspire you to make the decisions to be in this happy quantum reality. So if you want to be a billionaire and you start listening to stuff that says it's easy to be a billionaire, you can be a billionaire. You absolutely can be a billionaire. Of course you can be a billionaire. Of course you can be a billionaire. It's easy. Of course, of course you can start your own business. Of course you can start a bunch of business. Of course you can juggle several businesses at the same time. You are a smart person. You have everything you need inside of you to be successful. Success comes easy to you. You're always inspired to make better decisions. When you're filling your brain with these things, guess what it's going to do? It's going to inspire you to do what? Probably Google how to do this stuff. Google how to find business or how to run businesses. Google what you're really good at, how to turn your habits and your hobbies into making stupid amounts of money. It's going to inspire you to start upping your mental state even further, even further, even further until you get to the mental states of all these billionaires that actually are out there. If you actually want to be a billionaire, I don't, for me, I don't care to be a billionaire. I want to find somebody. I want to be in a happy life that I get to help people and I'm going to have a amazing adventure partner and have a couple of kids, maybe one or two kids and have a freaking amazing dope traveling life. And, um, my past life is going to be nothing but a flick of a memory when I'm, everything is said and done by the time I actually get to my end, because I was on this other line here. I don't even know if that's the right way. I think I did that backwards, but I was trying to write suicidal. I was on this road. This is where I was. And then I got to reality jump, which is going from here to here. That's all it is. That's all quantum physics is. It does not have to be this whole woo-woo stuff. It's just going from this whole depressing suicidal line of life where no matter what happens, my end is always going to end in misery. My end is always going to end in a terrible way. And going from there to say, you know what? F that. I'm going to this happy reality over here. And now you start going down this happy reality. And the rest of my life, I get to have my dream life. And I get to do things that make me happy. And I get to realize that all the negative stuff that people put in my head, that's their reality. And I don't have to receive that and take that into my life as mine. And now I don't do that anymore. And I'm going to make another video about how you get from here to there in a way that's going to probably make you all very uncomfortable and it's probably going to hurt some feelings, but you need to see it. So I'm going to leave this here again. All this is, is just to brainwash positive thoughts into your head so that you can get into a different state of mind, a different reality. And when you're using this law of assumption, that yes, you can have a good life and you're using all these affirmations and the law of attraction. Law of assumption is uh, you putting in all these positive thoughts in your head saying, yes, I can have a dream life. I can have a good life. People do love me. People want to be around me. I do have purpose. I am so important in this world. I have a great reason to be here. Every day is purpose for me. Whatever your truth that needs to be, you input that in your head and you're going to start changing from whatever reality you're in into your happy dream life reality. And then you're going to start attracting because your decisions are going to be better. You're going to be a happier person. You're going to be doing better things with your life. You're going to be thinking differently. You're going to be leveling up yourself. And then that's how you use your law of attraction. And then by doing all these things, your end, now you've manifested a happy life instead of manifesting a miserable, sad, depression life. So I know this is a really long video. Um, I'm really glad that you guys stayed through it all. I got to say, I just, I'm just so inspired with so much information. So I'm going to do my best to make as many videos as possible, make this as easy as possible. No more woo-woo, just easy science and love and brain. You control your brain. You control your brain. Your brain does not control you. You control your brain. Your brain does not control you. You control your brain. Your brain does not control you. And you get to have a better life. And it gets to be easy and it gets to start today.